You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. Hello, hello, Slow Down Society. We are on episode number 108 of the Slow Living Podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day, and today let's talk about being an entrepreneur. Regardless of whether or not you actually own and run your own small business. And that's because we are going to talk a little bit about adulting and doing things we don't want to do. And I have found that one of the best ways to kind of step into that mindset shift is to decide that you are running a business and you are a business. Your life is a business. And sort of taking the thought process from what do I want to do right now? How do I feel? I'm feeling really lazy. I'm feeling really kind of bored. I'm feeling down and out and just deciding that you're a business and you have to do things in order to keep the business whole and stable and running and secure. And so maybe you're not doing what you want to do. You need to do what the business needs. And this has come up a little bit recently on um, a few different coaching calls on how being an adult really isn't fun (laughs) in many ways. I think we sort of grow up with this idea that, oh, when I'm an adult, I can stay up late and eat Lucky Charms whenever I want and jump on the couch and nobody's going to tell me no. Nobody's going to tell me that I can't do that. And that's true. You absolutely can. Um, But in order to be a successful adult, someone who um, maybe is a parent and is raising the next generation, you do have to do things you don't want to do. And that kind of stinks. And um, and it's not fun. And a, a big, huge part of life and adulting is doing the next right thing, even when you don't want to. Um, This week, (laughs) this week, um, I have tennis lessons on Monday night, and I signed up for tennis lessons, oh, a long time ago, maybe eight weeks ago, in in the middle of the summer, the rec center catalog came out, and I flipped through it, I was looking through it. And I thought, you know what? I have always wanted to take a beginner tennis class. I took tennis in high school, but I haven't picked up a racket in years. The last time I took a lesson was 30 years ago. So let's get down to the basics. Let's uh, learn proper grip. Let's learn all of these things so I don't hurt myself (laughs) when I go out and whack at the ball. So signed up for this tennis class, took two lessons. It was a four class series. Took two lessons, liked them, loved them. But this past Monday night, I was tired. <laughs> I was cranky. It was a long day at work. Um, I came home and I crashed. I, I fell asleep um, for about an hour and then I jerked awake and I looked at the clock and I had plenty of time to eat a little bit of dinner and then go off to this tennis class. But I didn't want to. And I knew I didn't have to because I was an adult and nobody's going to tell me what to do. Um, I paid for these tennis classes, regardless of whether or not I went or or didn't go. The rec center had my money. Um, So I hemmed and I hawed, and I hawed and I hemmed. (laughs) And I went back and forth for quite a while. And then finally, I just kind of sucked it up. So when I'm in that like phase and, and, and funk and I got, I just don't want to do the things that I know are right. Um, 
I don't beat myself up in my brain because I'm pretty nice to myself because I think um, calling yourself stupid or calling yourself dumb or lazy doesn't really work. I will say suck it up buttercup um, because I realize (laughs) that when I'm in that phase, I'm feeling a little sorry for myself and I just want to curl up on the couch with my blankie and watch TV. And, And that's fine once in a while. But if you want to keep moving forward in life, you do have to do things sometimes that you don't want to do. So I started thinking about Steph as the business. So Steph as the business already paid money for this tennis class. Steph as a business in tennis years or so wants to be retired and wants to play tennis on a regular basis and, and not get hurt. And so wants those fundamentals. And so the right thing for me as a business, all of the different aspects of my life, working to weather, together in this kind of cohesive manner, really should just slap on her shoes and go play tennis. And, and ironically enough, the shoes are called tennis shoes. So I tied them on and I walked to the rec center. We're very lucky that we live in a walkable neighborhood and all of the things are right here within walking distance. And I I was a few minutes early. And so I went into the restroom and I just kind of like looked at myself in the mirror and I gave myself a little pep talk like, okay, Steph, you don't need to be social. This does not need to be the best tennis class of your life, but you are going to show up and you are going to do the things and it's going to be fine. And when it's all done, this is an hour, When it's all done, you can come home, you can take a nice hot shower, you can put on your cozy pajamas, you can have a mini can of wine from Trader Joe's with the little bubbles and the rosé can, which are absolutely delicious, and you can watch the episode of Southern Charm that you really want to watch on Bravo. And so I kind of put a little bit of water on my face and used the very rough paper towel (laughs) from the rec center bathroom. And I walked over the tennis court and the instructor was there and uh, this class only has six women in it. And he was telling them that this was the second to last class and you should share phone numbers and emails with each other so then you can go um, play when uh, the whole course session is over. And I had the thought of, I don't want to do that. I I don't want to share my phone number. I don't want to share my email. I like being anonymous. I don't need friends. I'm not going to do that. So I, I, I didn't do that right then and there. And then we had the class and my heart rate started going up and I started whacking some really good hits and, and it felt good. And I got this wave and surge of energy that I didn't have when I was just lazing around the house and it felt good. It felt good to have my heart rate kind of up and I was bouncy on my feet and, um, it just felt so nice. My Fitbit pulsed and congratulated me for getting my heart rate up. And I, I met, I met my, I think the, the default setting is 150 active minutes a week or something like that. And so I met that. And, and so it congratulated me and it gave me some confetti and, and kind of virtual gold stars. And it just felt great. And I'm whacking the ball around and it was an hour long class. And at the end, everyone was sort of standing around again. And then they said, hey, we didn't get your phone number and, and your email and we're going to get together and we're going to hit balls. And so I was in such a better mood and such a better place for having forced myself to go do something I didn't want to do, that now I felt social. So I happily shared. So now I have five women's first names in my phone with the last name Tennis. So then I can find them. And and when we're ready to go down to the rec center, we can have balls together. So let's think about it. Let's think about how I went from not wanting to do anything, from not wanting to leave the house to then going and really, truly enjoying my evening. Not only did I enjoy my evening, Adam and Sheldon met me there and then we went for a a good 
extra hour long walk because my youngest was at soccer practice. And so why take the shoes off? And I said, I said, you know what? I still have shoes on. Let's just keep walking and we'll walk the whole time um, that uh, our 13 year old is at soccer and then we'll pick her up with the dog. And so that's what we did. And it was great. And, and I was so buoyant and excited. And, and I was telling Adam, oh, okay, so I've got to hold my grip like this. And one of the reasons that my elbow and my forearm hurt so much is I'm gripping it too tight. And um, the coach guy wants me to loosen up a little bit. And I was like, oh, okay. And um, it just, it was so great. And, and all I did was I did the hard thing. I did the thing I didn't want to do. I, I didn't indulge in the the laziness sort of aspect. So you you um, I'm sure you've seen the cartoons where you've got the de- devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. That devil side really just wanted me to sit on the couch <laughs> and watch Southern Charm and probably eat way too many snacks and um and and just become one. And once in a while, that is okay. That is okay. But I'm trying to build a kind of life where I'm proud of myself, where I'm doing things to keep propelling me forward in all of the aspects of life. So in the, in the peace pyramid, it encompasses everything. You've got your time management, your health and your finances on that lower level. And then the next level is your organization and your relationships. And once those things are in check, you're at peace. You know you have touched upon all of the different components. And so if you're looking at your life as a business, instead of just going on your whims of, I want to do this, I want to do that, I don't want to do this, I don't want to go to work, I'm going to call in sick, whatever, they um, they owe me. I worked hard two weeks ago, I met that deadline, and they give me a certain amount of time each month or each year. And so they owe me. So I'm going to call in sick. So you can do that because you're an adult. But what if you planned on purpose your time off? What if you were given, I don't know, five, six days a year for personal days or vacation days, and then five, six days a year for quote unquote sick days, and you planned them out and instead of just not feeling it and calling in sick because you, you're you just feeling a little lazy. And feeling lazy, I want you to honor it. I don't want you to dismiss it. So when I was staring at myself in the mirror in the, the bathroom at the rec center before I went out and hit tennis balls, I was tired. I didn't want to do it. And so I told myself that that was okay. It's okay to feel bad. It's okay to feel lazy, but I'm going to have you do it anyway. And then when you're all done as a reward, you can sit on the couch in your cozy jammies with your blankie and your tiny little baby can of Trader Joe's rosé wine. That's your reward. That's what you're going to do. So go do this hard thing first, and then you reward yourself. And that's what adults do. And that's what you do as a business owner of your own life. So I do have my own small business. Um, I'm talking to you through headphones right now and a microphone. And this is a big component of the, the business that I've created for myself. And many times I don't want to do the things. <laughs> I just don't because it's easier. We're, I'm a little sloth-like. Um, yes, I, I hit and meet and exceed most of my goals that I set out for myself. But my default is is lazy. I would always, always, always <laughs> rather curl up on the couch and binge watch Bravo. I just would. But I, I kind of muster up the strength and I encourage myself to go do things that I don't want to do for the betterment of the business for the betterment of my life. And you can do that too, regardless of whether or not you're a small business owner. So as far as your health, in general, you know probably 
what food is good for you and what food is not good for you. And, and by good for you, meaning how it makes your body feel. I, I don't like to villainize food. If I am in the mood for cake, I am happy to eat cake. It, it's, it's not a problem. But if I eat cake every day or if I eat cake too often, it just doesn't make me feel good. My body feels sluggish. I, I'm, I'm more tired because of the sugar highs and lows. And so because of that, I usually opt for what people quote unquote deem healthier food. So, so maybe lately I've been in this lentil kick. So, um, I'm talking about Trader Joe's again, and I feel very lucky that we live close enough to a Trader Joe's, but lately I've been mixing, um, they have these already steamed lentils in a pouch in the produce section. So if you get one of those and then a bag of shredded kale, and that's right next to it in the produce section, and then they have near the dip, this tub of bruschetta. So it's already made for you. And, and the idea is you're smearing it on top of French bread, um, but we don't really eat French bread because of our gluten intolerance in the house. And so if you mix those things together, you've got this amazing lentil kale salad where the olive oil is already in there, the onion, the tomato, the garlic, the parsley, the basil, like it's all in there. And I'm just dumping and stirring. And then it takes a while for the kale to soften. So I let it marinate in the fridge for a bit. But that, oh, and one other thing, this is a key ingredient for me, a tub of crumbled feta, because that is delicious. So it's lentils and kale and bruschetta and feta all mixed together. Amazing salad. I'll eat it every day for a week. Um, that's what my body feels good at. It's, it's low carb, but then high fiber and keeps all of the pipes working. And it tastes delicious and it keeps me going. If I had a choice between that and cake, more often than not, the first thought, that kind of reptilian knee jerk, oh, I want that response would be cake. But then if I take a pause and I slow down and I actually think about what would make my body feel good, it's this lentil kale salad. So then I'll tell myself, okay, Steph, eat the lentil kale salad. And then as a reward, you can have a tiny little piece of cake. More often than not, the, the, the lentil and the kale and all that kind of stuff fills me up enough that I can dismiss the, the cake for longer. I can kind of delay that idea. Back to the day of the tennis when I told myself that I could um, sit on the couch with my cozy blanket and, and have my tiny little baby can of wine and watch Southern Charm. I didn't end up doing that. I had that idea, but then Adam met me and I felt kind of energetic. So we walked Sheldon for another hour. So my Fitbit had like well over 22,000 steps that day. And, and it just kind of egged me on even more. And, and it propelled me toward that kind of future Steph who's active and does play tennis every day and, and has at some point grandchildren and, and can do all these things and still has um, joints that work and, and muscle mass under probably saggy skin, <laughs> but muscle mass that, that can do those things. And so if you have the idea that you are running a business and that you as a human has whims and, and nuances and thoughts and feelings that may not be productive, that may not be helpful and beneficial for your overall sort of goal that you have for yourself, just decide to, to take the human out of it and, and be a business. Just be a business. What is right for Steph right now is not the same as what is right for Steph the business right now. So be the business, be the entrepreneur of your own life. I was um, talking to a friend of mine because we were talking about overalls and, and Halloween is coming. And so um, she was saying that she needed a pair of overalls because she was going to be a scarecrow at work. And I said, oh, I've got overalls. I said, I think I bought them in 94, but they're in the closet. And she says, 94? I said, yeah. And she's like, and they fit? I said, you know, they do. They do fit. I've had three babies. My hips are absolutely wider, but in general, 
they still fit because they're overalls. And in in general, after that first baby, I I have worn the same size. I can't get into any – and none of that work clothes that I had when I was in the courthouse and, and working for the county um, fit. I had gotten rid of all of those clothes. But since having baby number one and going back to work, all of those clothes fit. And in general, I have stayed around the same size. Um, yes, there are seasons that are uh, – looser and, 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 and fluffier than others. But, um, I, I, I don't buy clothes because they no longer fit. And that again is part of Steph as the business. Steph as a business is frugal. She doesn't want to buy new clothes. I prefer to wear pretty much the same thing all the time. So in the winter, I have a, a set pair of, I don't know, five, six pairs of jeans that I rotate through. And in the summer, it's yoga pants and shorts, and I rotate through. And sometimes if the fabric gets pilled, I get rid of them and, and buy new ones, but it, they happen to be the same size. Um, and that's because I'm frugal. And so if the pants start to get a little tighter, I that's just a, a sign that stuff as a business needs to cut back on eating so much or or needs to up her exercise. But I'm not going to go dip into our finances to buy new pants because these ones don't fit. Like, like that's not the issue. The issue isn't I need more pants. I don't want to spend that money. I would rather just tighten up on what I'm eating or increase my exercise. So that is another way of, of looking at it. I'm also, because I'm so frugal, Shopping isn't a fun thing for me. Um, I don't get excited about spending money ever. (laughs) I will do it for a vacation. I like to do things and and I'm not scared to spend money, but I would rather invest in in things that really sort of propel me forward and and, um, make my life enjoyable and, and really provide spark. And buying a pair of jeans when I have perfectly good jeans that maybe are just a little bit too tight, there's no way I'm, I'm going to dismiss those or cast them aside. It just means, um, okay, Steph, <laughs> let's drink a few days of protein drinks and and, and really kind of rein it in. And, and then it all comes right back on. But it's because of that idea of what do I want? Cake. What does my body need? What does Steph the entrepreneur need? Lentil and kale salad and to up my protein. Okay. I hope that was helpful and useful in some way. Um, And so that's you as a business. For you, if you are married or partnered up, and if you have children, it's more complicated. Um, It's not romantic, but if you're married, your relationship with your spouse is is kind of the most important business partnership you will ever get into in your whole entire life. Um, when your finances are commingled, you no longer are alone and you absolutely have a business partnership. And if you are raising the next generation, you have a, a tiny little um, family business. And, and paying attention to what's going in and what's going out and what will serve the business and, and what does the family business need. Well, maybe the family business needs an injection of fun and you need a vacation. So so planning for that, paying attention for that and getting all of the stakeholders, meaning your spouse and your children, on board for what you're trying to build and achieve and what the vision is, is absolutely necessary and important. Sandy Cooper, she runs the, um, the balanced mom cast and, um, I've had her on, um, and actually I think I'm going to interview her in a few more weeks. So I think it was episode 35 with Sandy Cooper and the audio was not the best and I'm disappointed on that. So that is another reason that I'm going to have her back on the podcast, but she and her husband, John, I've been married for 30 years and on the Balanced Momcast, she just did a two-part uh, episode 
on where she was interviewing John. And they were talking about what has made their marriage work for so long. And they didn't discuss this in these two episodes. But I know Sandy, and um, we've talked about this before. And we talk about how being on the same page with your spouse in this kind of entrepreneurial mindset means you have to have a state of the union. And and so state of the union, yes, you're married, and so state of the union. But then also, as, as this business, where are you? Where are we going? Are we on the right track for retirement? Are we paying attention to our health? Like, so when Adam goes to the doctor, I am thrilled that he's going to the doctor because I want to know <laughs> that all of this time and energy that I've invested in him is going to pay off and we can do the things we want to do in 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. Does that mean I can count on that? No. Stuff happens. Life happens. He can get hit by a bus. I don't want him to. I could get hit by a bus. He doesn't want me to. And it's not something we're planning on. No one is planning on, on dropping dead, but that unfortunately is reality. And so taking care of our health and going in once a year for a checkup to making sure all of those, uh, all of our blood work is okay. Um, we're paying attention to the weird moles that crop up here and there. That's part of investing in this business that we've created. So then we know 5, 10, 15 years down the line, we can do the things that we want to do. Um, so back to Sandy and John, they had um, uh, talked, well, Sandy had talked to me about State of the Union. And for the longest time, Adam and I on our date nights would kind of have a little business meeting and he would call it a business meeting and we would go over the finances and, and the money and the savings and what's in the 529s for the kids and, well, do you think they're going to go to UC or do you think they're going to go to a state school? And, and that kind of stuff. And it might not sound super romantic, but we are practical and we know that we have to be on the same page with this in order to keep moving forward. And, and, Every once in a while, I'll get on the phone with somebody, and when we talk about the components of the peace pyramid, and I start talking about finances, they uh, sort of brush me off, or they dismiss me and say, oh, I don't need to worry about that because my husband takes care of all of it. That is great. That That's wonderful. But you have to know what's going on also. You you just do, because you are the second part of this business. One, you need to at least know where all the passwords are um, in case he does get hit by a bus. You you do have to know these things. It's part of being a full-fledged adult. Um, okay. If you've got questions on this, hit me up. Email me, steph at stephanieoday.com. Um, you can track me down online. Um, Instagram is at stephanieoday. There is a Facebook community called the Slowdown Society. And so if you look at that or if you go to the main Stephanie O'Day Facebook page and go in the group section, you can join in there and ask questions. It's a great group of women and um, and we're happy to help. And anyway, I want to drop a few other podcast episodes for you that if you haven't listened to, they might be helpful and to try to, to just kind of shift your mindset from thinking of you as a person with a lot of moods and a lot of whims and a lot of wants and shifting into the mindset of an entrepreneur and someone who is running a little business. And instead of focusing only on the wants, you start focusing on the needs. And, um, and I've mentioned this quote before, but I'm going to mention it before of if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And for you as a business owner, you have to be driving the car. You've got to be in the front seat and you've got to be paying attention to all of the things in order to keep the business running. Okay. So number 72 was called deciphering data. 
And especially if you take emotion out of your decisions and you're running your life, not all the time, but maybe once in a while as a business, you are collecting data. And so 72 will talk to you about taking the emotion out of the data and, and just deciding what to do with this information that you've been collecting. Number 80, don't reinvent the wheel. So sometimes when you are in kind of this groundhog day cruise control part of life, which is actually where the sweet spot is, sometimes you feel angsty and antsy and you want to kind of upset the apple cart and, uh, and, and kind of throw in uh, the monkey wrench. And, and no, I don't want you to do that. Don't reinvent the wheel. Tweak, modify, fine tune. But if you are on the right path and you're on the right trajectory, keep trudging on because that's, that's where, where the magic happens. That's where you're building momentum and you just know you're going to get there. That's such an amazing feeling that I want for all of you. 83, decision fatigue. When you have already decided something, it's such a relief. So I said earlier that I, that I have uh, the, the same kind of jeans in different colors, but they're the same kind of jeans and they fit and I just rotate through them. Same with yoga pants and, and shorts. When I find something that I like, I buy in multiples so I never have to think about it again. I love using the crock pot because I have made the decision early in the morning to plop it in. And it's not fun for me at the end of the day when I'm tired and cranky to figure out dinner. So see where you can alleviate way too many micro decisions throughout your day. 86, work-life balance. That is the what we are all trying to do here. How can we live our life to the fullest and still make money <laughs> and, and, and still run this tiny little business? And then number 91, time blocking. So um, time blocking, I spend a lot of time with my coaching clients with. And in general, it's sort of running your life um, on a schedule. So I like to use the idea of the schedule that's hanging up in on the wall in a kindergarten classroom or preschool classroom where you just know the next thing to do. Okay, it's circle time. Okay, it's snack time. Okay, it's recess time. Okay, it's nap time. These, these are the different things. So if you have a work day, Maybe it's checking email, answering voicemail, um, checking the budget, um, mailing things out, looking at invoices. Those are the things. These are the things that you have to do no matter what. Write them down, put them on the calendar, check them on the li off the list. And then you realize all of a sudden how much more margin you have in your day. Because maybe those things, they really don't take a whole eight-hour workday. Maybe you can actually uh, front load them and, and realize that you have all this other time to do things that you've been putting off because you've been stretching things out an awful lot and, and you can utilize your time a little bit better. So time blocking is an amazing tool and that is in episode number 91. All right, pretty people, I am signing off. Let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, and, and how that sort of shifted just a little bit from you as a human to you as an entrepreneur. Take care, pretty people. I'll see you next time. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.